What would you think of a person who was born penniless, away from everyone, lived out in the boonies in hostile territory, without a name or influence in the world, rising to become a senator, a representative of the United States of America, and then later become a legend in its own time that for around 200 years has never died out. What would you think of a person who lived a life like that? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? But yet it happened for one individual named David Crockett, king of the frontier. So David's life here on the frontier, of course he was born in 1786, this is before Tennessee was a state. So at this time there was little to no settlement out here. There was no, you know, though the pioneers out here, the frontiersmen, they were paying their taxes to North Carolina. They were not receiving things that you wouldn't normally receive for your taxes. Things like roads, post office, even protection from the Native Americans. So at that time, you were kind of had to fend for yourself out here if you were born into this society west of the Appalachians. You not only had to fend for yourself in a protection way, but you also had to provide your own food. You had to provide your own clothing, all your own, everything you made by hand. So he was born with that independence of uh, self just ingrained into himself. So, what he excelled at, of course, was being a hunter. We all know David Crockett as the hunter. When he joined Andrew Jackson in the Red Stick Wars, he served in a couple battles, but he quickly found that hand-to-hand -hand fighting, man-on-man -man fighting was not his forte. How he would serve the army better was being a procurer, a hunter, someone who would feed his fellow troops. That way he did not have to engage in that combat, but at the same time could do something that was seen as, one, masculine, two, important, and three, helping the cause. So of course, David's time with the army was spent mostly hunting and providing food for his fellow soldiers. A very important thing when a lot of those soldiers were starving because of poor supply lines. So David Crockett growing up in this, you know, wilderness, this backcountry out here, helped him become develop that skill set that was necessary for his time in the military. Crockett would have been not really wanting to keep livestock as much because he was a long hunter, so he was out long periods of time hunting. So his preferred animal uh, was down the sights of his rifle, so not on the homestead. This guided David through his military career, his political career, and all the way to his death at the Alamo because he learned to live off the land and take care of himself, but also take care of his neighbors, who he looked out for. Yes, so how did Davy Crockett's life here affect his politics um, on a nationwide scale? So of course, David Crockett was born here in 1786. He was born to poor um, non-landowners uh, a family that had to scrape for subsistence and um, worked very hard. He had no title to his name. He had uh, no land, no education. Um, and because of that, um, when he eventually did become a man of note and a man who could affect change, those were the people he ended up advocating for, was the poor people, the land squatters, the people with no education, the people who a system could take advantage of. So his idea was being a voice an advocate for those lower caste of society. So obviously there wasn't electricity back then, so you would rely inside your house on fire, not only for heat, but also for food, for heating up water to take your maybe weekly bath or wash your clothes. So fire for sure, and long hunters providing pelts or even just people on, their, on the homestead going out hunting, getting pelts for blankets, for clothes. The skills that Davy Crockett learned to hunt and provide food for the army of Andrew Jackson, he learned in Limestone, Tennessee. You can still visit Davy Crockett's birthplace in Limestone, Tennessee to this day. So what do I enjoy most about working at Davy Crockett Birthplace State Park here in Limestone, Tennessee and being a park ranger here? Um, so what I enjoy most, of course, is just the many hats that a park, Tennessee State Park Ranger gets to do. One second we'll be pulling somebody out of the river, the next day we'll be fixing a water line in the playground, 
and then the next day we'll be over here doing research in the museum space. Um, we'll be leading field trips and search and rescue missions. It just bounces back and forth. Davy Crockett Birthplace State Park has a lot of different things you can do. If you enjoy the river, we've got a river. If you enjoy animals, we've got some donkeys here. If you enjoy hiking, we've got some trails. If you like birds, we've got lots of birds. There's a lot of wildlife here, a lot of history here. There's a lot of things you can do here. So it really appeals to a lot of people. So that's why I would say come here because you can do pretty much anything here. But also remember his humble origin, because this is where it all began. Before David became a military hero, a politician, and a legend in his own time that has not passed away.